Um, Jesse, I yes. got a question. Yes, My sir. question is, are some people uh, destined to remain sinners or, or not to be able to overcome? Because I understand, you know, the Jesus Christ story that uh, he came and set us free. Right. But uh, I'm just wondering if some of us are, uh, I guess, regardless of that message, will, will remain to be angry and remain sinners? I think so. Yeah, I think that, Why there, is are, that? there are people who are just, that's what their purpose is, is to represent hell on earth. Because if you don't have hell, you won't recognize heaven. And so we need this battle between good and evil so that we can know it. You know, we can know the difference. If you were always well, you, you know, you never had pain in your body, you wouldn't even know that uh, uh, wellness exists, you know. But when you have this hell, you have pain, you overcome it, then you recognize heaven. So, yeah, I, I believe that there are people who are on earth for that purpose is to give you pure hell. And I'm not talking about people's wives. I'm talking about other folks. They're there for that purpose. And you're right, Christ came to save, but God also knows what he's doing. And when the church says that Christ came so that we all can be free, it's really more of an intellectual understanding about that. But there are some people, I just believe their purpose is to serve Satan. And we need that, I think. Because Christ had to go through it with Satan, so we got to deal with it, too, right. I believe. Did you want to add to that? Yeah. Uh, I just had a question for John. Are you talking about others <coughs> or yourself? Well, I was talking about myself. I thought, I thought you might be talking about yourself. Oh, you're talking about yourself? Yeah. Yes. You, think you, you think you're destined for hell? You're destined for hell? I don't know. Um... Uh, I never thought about it that way, but uh, there's some things that I would like to overcome. And uh, I heard the message that you should forgive your parents. I mean, intellectually, uh, I think I've forgiven my parents. So right. I don't have any resentment. Or I'm, I'm not around my mom. She lives in Chicago. So, but when we talk on the phone or when she comes out here for a visit, uh, I don't really feel anything coming up as far as anger or rage. Right. And so where is your dad? Oh, he passed away years ago. Oh, I see. So why do you think you may be destined for hell? Why do Not you think destined that? for hell, but, um, you know, I would like to overcome my sins and my anger. And uh, it just seemed like uh, uh, I'm not there, so that's why I asked the question. Oh, okay. So it seems like you're not there, and does it seem as though you're never going to be there? You're never going to get over it? I don't know. You don't, do you feel like you won't ever get over it? Or I feel it's possible. That you will get over it? Yes. Oh, okay. And you want to overcome your sins. That's a very interesting statement. Michelle, how do you feel knowing your husband ain't, you know? <laughs> Oh, hold on a minute. You hold it, Robert. Go ahead, Michelle. I don't feel anything. I just focus on me for right now. Oh, you don't focus on John? No. Oh, good. It's just on you? No, it's not like that, but... I mean, no, no, no. That's not a bad thing. To know thyself is important. So what do you see about yourself? I see I need a, like, a lot of improvements for myself as well. Like what? Like everything. Like patience and I still have resentment at times yeah and it's hard for you to overcome it too yeah because it still arises it does so, yeah and what can bring it out like like pressure I guess yeah pressure but that pressure <laughs> what did you say no like just like light pressure like comments and statements Oh, like, um, have you gotten over your parents yet? I thought I did, but at times I see when I talk to my mom, no. Oh, so you have not gotten over it? No. Yeah, okay. And why don't you deal with your mother so you can let it go? I do deal with her, but I think that's the problem. 
So, <laughs> no, I, I do deal with her, and I see, I always thought she was this perfect lady, and now I see she's not, she's not perfect. Right. And, and have now you I see, I, and I also saw, I don't know, I just depended on her for so many years, and it's like, it seems, it seems like her attitude has changed. I don't know if she's getting older, or, I just see her just different. In what way? She can't help herself. It, it seems like now I'm realizing she doesn't, she just did the best she can. Yeah. And so is that helping you to overcome your anger toward her? Realizing that she can't help herself? Yes. Yes, she's wrong, but she can't help it. Yes, but still at times I get angry. Yeah. At her. Um, you said you relied on her for, for such a long time? Yes. For what? What did you rely on her for? Everything, like as far as, well, I'm the youngest girl, and she, she was a stay-at-home mom. And that's like, she's a re really all I ever really knew. Oh. I have sisters and things, but I was with her all the time. And sometimes now, if I have, like, comments, I guess maybe it's not the comment I want from her. Oh, you don't want certain type of comments from her? Yes, it's not the comment I expected from her, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And do you tell her about it? Yes. And what does she say? That's why I say she can't help herself. She doesn't really understand. Yeah. Or maybe I'm trying to see, too, maybe because it's not the answer I want to hear, maybe it's me. Can you give me an example or something? come back to it. I gotta th I gotta, I'll think of something because it's like a lot of different things. Oh, okay. And so, do you hang out with her a lot now? No. Oh, good. <laughs> You're not going to tell you not to. No, I don't. Even with just the comment on the phone. Like, if I, if like, say I depend on her, like, not really depend on her, but she's my mom and I want to hear her comments about things. You do? Yes. Well, okay. I thought I did. Right. <laughs> And like, say if I, I was uh, I'm upset about something, she'll she'll give me a comment. I, evidently, that's, if she says it, that's how she feels, or that's the answer. That's it's her answer. Oh. But maybe it's not the answer I want to hear. Right. So let's say you you're upset at John about something, right? Mm -hmm. And so you call up your mother, and you say, I hate John. John made me sick. <laughs> <laughs> and she just said, Well, I told you not to marry him. And that's not what you want to hear. <laughs> no, she wouldn't say that, but she would say, oh, it's my fault. It's your fault? Yeah. She would say, oh, it's your fault that you are mad at him or married him? Not mad at him. It's my fault with the situation. Her upbringing was when she was hurt. It's a, it's a time frame, well, age period. Yeah. Her thing was, oh, you get married and you do what the husband says and... I guess she never disagreed with it. Because I always talk about her like my dad and her former husband and things like that. And sometimes, like, if we have a disagreement or something, I'm not in agreement with what she says, but, like, it's that age difference, and that's how her era did it. Uh, it's like she just doesn't understand my perception of things. Oh, I see. And so she believed that once a woman get married, she needs to listen to, listen to her husband and not be acting out and carrying on about it? In a way, yeah. Is that what she believed? Yes. And you don't believe that? I didn't say... <laughs> don't be scared. It's, no, it's not that I don't <laughs> believe that, but it's like she just don't have no... With me, she don't have any... Not really the word sympathy, but she doesn't have any... I don't know how to... She doesn't have an understanding about how to guide you? Yes. Or instruct you? Yes. Oh, okay. So why not go to your husband with your problem rather than going to her? I don't think he understands either. Your husband doesn't understand you either? No. And then you don't understand you. Hold I on. Hold on. God I talking to me right now. <laughs> no, it feels like I... Well, God said he doesn't understand you no, either. It seems like I no. understand me, but nobody really else understands <laughs> me. So what now? I understand me, but nobody else really understands. Really? And what do you understand about you? I 
could be wrong, Jesse. It's just how I feel. No, no, no. Yeah, no, don't worry. Don't defend it. We just, you no, know. No, I'm just saying. I think to myself, sometimes maybe I could be wrong about it. Right. But what do you understand about yourself? Let me ask you. Oh, go ahead. Finish that. Oh, no, go ahead. I'm trying to think on what, what on the you, one you don't know when you're right or wrong in a situation? You're not sure? Because you said sometimes At you can times. be wrong. There are times when you don't know when you're right or wrong about the situation. Yes. Uh, can you give me an example of something recently, if it's not too personal? Hold well, an example. If I discipline the kids a certain way, John would come in and go, oh, don't discipline them like that or some, something like that. And right then, I think that, okay, I did it right. But then he'll come along and say something. And I'm like, maybe, well, maybe I'm wrong about it. Oh, I see. That's a good example. How do you discipline the kids? Well, at they're good most of the time. But at times, they're like, say if they're fighting or something. Uh -huh. I tell them to stop that. <laughs> I tell them to stop that fighting or something, or if they're jumping in the bed, I tell them to stop jumping in the bed. And I don't really, I get loud with them. John right. thinks it's yelling, but to me, I'm being loud. You raise your voice. Yes. And sometimes that's needed. Yeah, but am I doing it? I don't know if I'm, but I think I was fine with it, but he sometimes at times think I'm not right. Um, are you doing it with anger? Like, are you, like, mad at them when you raise your voice? Or are you raising your voice because you need to get their attention? I think both. Oh, so you're doing it with, because you're mad at them? Not really mad at them, but I need, yeah, I need to get their attention. But, yes, I'm mad. It depends on what they do. Right. I understand that. Uh, I'm going to put a reality camera in your house so I can see what's going on. <laughs> I'm going to follow you. <laughs> going to follow you around. Let me ask. You can't tell when you're mad, I mean, like, when you're disciplined them with anger? You, you don't know that personally for yourself? At times, yes. And what do you do when you see yourself doing that with anger? I, I can feel it. I can see it. And I just, I just go in another room. And I just cool down a bit. And then, but it gets worse when John comes in and... The anger does? Yes, because he'll tell me to go away. He'll handle it. He'll tell you to go away? Yes. And, and he'll handle the situation with the kids? Yes. And you don't like that? Because he has anger towards me. I, I think he does. Oh, you I think, can tell in his voice. Oh, you think your husband has anger toward you? Yes. You can tell it in his voice? Yes. And when you ask him about it, what does he say? He'll tell me, oh, I don't like the way you do things. I'll handle it from now on. And does he admit he has anger toward you? No. He doesn't admit it? No. And so you'll say, do you have anger toward me? And he'll say no? I don't know if he says no, but usually I don't get an answer. Oh, he doesn't answer most of the time. I don't think so. How does it feel knowing he has anger or believing that he has anger toward you? What does that feel like? It hurts. It hurts? I bet it does. And why does it hurt? It's like I, nobody understands me. Not, it's not under, about understanding, but it just feels like I'm by, my, like a, by myself. Yeah. But I'm, it used to really hurt, but I'm getting used to it now. You're getting used to it? Yes. And so when you guys sit down and talk about this, do you have, like when you're not mad or when he's not mad, do you sit down and say, you know, no. I sense that you resent me and... It feel weird for you to be mad at me. Why don't you do something about it? Do you ever talk to him about it? No. And why not? It doesn't seem like he wants to talk. I try, but you try. I could be wrong. I, tr I think I try. Yeah, you try, but he wouldn't communicate well about it? No, I don't think so. And so it hurts knowing that your husband resents you. Why would he? Well, I don't know if he's resenting me. This is my opinion. A feeling that he does. And, and why do you feel that he does? I don't know if he resents me. It's like he has anger. Well, why do you think he has anger toward you? Maybe how I handle things. Oh, okay. And it makes you feel not good enough when he does that. Or I... by yourself. Yes. Uh, wh what would he resent you for? I'm sorry. He would resent you because of what reason? 
I don't know if he resents me, but I think he has anger. Okay, he would be angry at you for what reason? Maybe for yelling at the kids. I don't know. You don't know. It's too bad because the, the one thing I like to see is for families to start having those open and honest discussions together. It's going to feel uncomfortable to do it for a while, but after a while it becomes a way of life, especially when you're having these conversations to, to resolve a situation. You're not attacking. You don't, you're not trying to hurt the person. It's good to have those kind of discussions because when your kids see you discussing things like that, they would do it too. There are so many family members I mean, there are so many families out there that do not have real discussions about real issues that are happening inside the family. Isn't that amazing? Don't you find that amazing, Michelle? Yeah. Yeah. And you would like to do that with, with your husband? Yeah. But he doesn't seem to want to do it? No, that's in my opinion. No, yeah. I could be wrong. And so if you could reach out to your husband, you wouldn't have to call your mother or anybody else, right? I mean, you, you want to have to talk to her about your issues whenever you do. Yeah. Where's your dad? I don't know. You don't know? No. You had one? Yes. Oh. And but why do you don't know where he is? I don't know. Him and my mom, they just separated. Oh, were they married at one point? Yes. And he just, at, when did he leave the home? He, I don't know when he left. He got off, he did, had did drugs and... He left. He comes and goes. And How old were you at the time when he first left? When he first left? I think I was like in my teenage, like a teenager or something. Oh, okay. And did that affect you when he left? Were you close to him? I think I was, yes. I always thought if they ever broke up, I would go with him. That you would go with him? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand that feeling. But you didn't, and that affected you? No, I don't No, I don't think it did. It did. But sometimes I think that... I don't know if she. I don't know if she resents me. I. I could be wrong, Jesse. Yeah. But she always said I'm just like him. I'm uh -huh. like passive. And yeah. where her first husband, he was like aggressive. That's is, my sister's. That's your sister's father. Yeah. And is your sister aggressive too? I don't think they're aggressive. They're more like strong-willed, I guess. Oh, there are more than one sister. Yeah, too. And so your, your mother said you're just like your father, passive. She didn't say those words, but, yeah, I'm just like, that's what she says, I'm just like. And how, how do you feel about that? Mm, I don't really feel anything. I think I am, because she's more strong-willed, my mom. Yeah. And are you passive? I am, yeah. You're passive. What does it feel like to be passive? <laughs> how does it It just feels... It just feels like just passive, like just... Like weak? Not weak. I consider quiet. Quiet? Yeah. Quiet. So there are things that you don't deal with because you're quiet, passive. Yes. Oh. It, do you want to overcome that? Yes. You want to overcome that? And, okay, we're going to show you how to overcome that today. Because that's not a good way to live. I know guys who are passive like that, and it's disgusting. It made the bully in the playground want to knock you out. You notice that? Did the girls used to beat you up in school? Oh, no. Oh, you fought back, huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I well, never got involved. I always could get along with everybody. Oh, you did? Yeah. So that you don't have to deal with stuff? You go along to get along? No, like I said, I was just quiet. I just oh. was. I go and play and do my own thing. I'll, I'll play and interact with them and everything. But would you like to overcome that? Yes. Oh, okay. I, I want... notice at times when I don't talk, say something like, like say I like try to talk to her or something. Yeah. I see her, she like takes over, not takes over me, but I'll like, like I'm talking. Yeah. And she just come up with this, like a, this aggressive attitude. I'm like, I just like cower down to her. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that. You got to start standing up to her. And you'll be nervous for a while, but that will only last for a while. You got to fight for your life back. Well, I don't see what the point of standing up when no one listens. Um, they don't have to listen. The point of standing up so you can overcome your insecurities. So that you can forgive her and then you can become strong and you'll learn how to express yourself and be free and not be passively weak. That's why you need to do it, because she's taking your courage away from you. 
just made you feel like nothing. And, and so now you're living your life like just a, a, a person in the crowd, but the crowd don't see you there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because she's taking that away from you. Yeah, because I, I talked to my sisters, and I, asked, and I asked them, I go, why don't she talk to me? She don't talk to you guys that way. Yeah. And what do they say? <laughs> <laughs> They go, they just tell her in a nice way. But it's in a, I, cause I hear how they talk to her. Yeah. I don't know if it's because they're older. No, it's because you're weak. She hates your father, according to what you said. Yeah, I think she does. And so when she sees you, she sees your father. She hates you. Probably. Yeah. And, but you got to deal with her, though, so you can get better from it. You got to deal with her so you can forgive her so that God can change your identity. You got to overcome mama. Have you ever asked your husband to help you deal with her? No. Why not? Because I could barely deal with him, too. <laughs> yeah. Is he like your mother? Sometimes I think they are. They're the same sign at times. Yeah. You feel like you married your mother? No. Sorry, John. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he, he has an aggressive way, too, and he gets stubborn, too. So I just... Oh. Uh. So does it seem like he resent your weakness or your passiveness? I don't know. So sometimes passive people can make you hate them if you don't know what's going on. Well, if you don't talk, how am I supposed to get anything across? If he doesn't talk? And then maybe I'm, at times I get attitude, Jesse. At times I do, yes. Yeah. He gets mad. I'm like, well, maybe I said it wrong. Maybe I should say it nice. And I'm like, yeah. so I don't know how to say it. Just say it. And if he gets angry, it's not your fault that he's getting angry. But you got to just say it. And then if he gets angry, he has to look at himself because you didn't make him angry. He was angry when you met him. It's not your fault that he's angry. Now, your weakness can make it worse, and that's still not your fault either because he needs to overcome that if what you're saying is true, and I do believe you. But you got to overcome it too, but it's not your fault. Remember, I was saying, what happened to the sign? <laughs> Our uh, theme for this year is that no one is to blame for your anger. You're mad. You're already mad when I met you, so I'm not to blame for you being mad. Your daddy, your mama did it to you. I didn't do it to you. But I didn't know you, how you know when a person's angry. They could hide it a long time. But that's what the purpose of dating is. Yeah, we did a long time. And he didn't show it? I don't remember seeing it. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> you didn't see it until the morning after the honeymoon night? <laughs> <laughs> you woke up and like, who is this man? I married my mama. No, to be honest, I really didn't see it, Jesse, until, like, I stayed at home with the kids. Until you stayed home with the kids? Yeah. And that's when you saw it? Yes. Maybe because I was, before we had kids, I was working, he was working. Oh, yeah. And were you shocked when you saw it? A little bit. Not okay. too much. No, no, why not too much? If you had not seen it, how long did you date well, for? Well, it, kind of, it, it didn't come just all, all anger all of a sudden. It's oh, just gradually. It just bit by bit. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to get you away from that. Um, do you want to see your dad? I do. Uh, why don't you look for him? Well, I don't know where to look for him at. You don't know, ask your mother. Your mother has to, she was married to him at one point, right? She still is. She don't know where he is. She asked me, because sometimes we go over there, I drive by where I, where I usually be at. But they do, rebuild and stuff, so I don't know. Do you know his folks, like his mother, father, sister, brother? You don't know any of his people? No. How do you not know any of his people? He's that type, just, he just goes with the wind. He doesn't have a family? He does, but, but he, he doesn't do He never brought him around while... Why you? No, my mom, she used to stay in touch, and his mom died, and he just went off to himself. Oh, I see. But you would love to see your father. Yeah. Yeah, I bet. I understand that feeling, too. That's amazing, Michelle. I, I just you... don't understand. When you're married to the first person who's aggressive, and then you go the opposite <clears throat> to someone who's passive, how do you... So your mother married a, a aggressive person first, yeah. and then a passive man second. Yes. Oh, okay. Because your mother needs somebody to help her overcome her hell. 
She's looking for a man to help her overcome it, but she keeps marrying men just like her father, weak men. You know, because an aggressive person like that is weak as well. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, that's not love. That's a weakness. And a passive person is a weakness as well. There's that little center. There's that place you got to live where you can guide people in the right way. And that's what your mother's looking for. Mm. And she can't. She's, you know, a lot of women are looking for that in men. But the men, most of them have been all messed up too. They have a woman's identity. And so it's like two lesbians marrying. And so they're looking for love, but they end up getting the wrong thing. Uh, John. Yes. Uh, you resent your wife, Michelle? Yes, at times. You do. And did you know she was feeling this way about it? No, she doesn't. She doesn't talk a lot. Uh, I mean, she's very talkative. If we're, we're talking about the kids, but if you asked her a question about anger or resentment or something like that, she had, she'll give a quick one-word answer. So. Um, uh, no, I didn't. You didn't. And why do you resent her? Well, I can see at times when, when she's angry at me or resentful at me about something, and then that's, then I'll get angry. Yeah. Oh, when she's angry at you, you, you show her love by getting angry at her. No. <laughs> Why get angry at her because she's angry at you? What, what's your point? Well, in situations that when I see her like that, nothing has been done. You just walked in the house, and she's, uh, she's angry and hateful for no reason. So I'm thinking, like, well, what's going on? Uh, I've only been in the house for two minutes, and she's, she's acting crazy or, or being angry at me about something. And so and, we'll all get angry. And she's home all day with the kids now? Uh, no, not anymore. But This that, was like before when she was at home with the kids. Oh, okay. So she goes out of work now. Yeah, she's working. But when she was home with the kids, you, you would come home and she's just mad at you about nothing? Yes. Is she still mad at you about nothing now that she goes out to work? When you get home? Well, that's just one example of those... I guess these incidents are few and far in between. I mean, for days, things can be normal, and then all of a sudden, uh, we can get into an explosive argument over, over something that's, that's probably silly. Um, but what good, good is it doing, doing you or your family for you to give her anger back because she is angry? None. So why do it? Well, I guess uh, at, at that at that moment, uh, I don't have any control over it. Uh, do you realize your role in life concerning your family? Do you know how important your role is? Not not totally. You don't. Oh, okay. Um, and I I, I kind of know that my love should be for her the same way that it is for my two boys. Yeah. But it's not. But it's not. You love your two boys? Yes. But you don't love your wife? Not all the time. Not all the time. And how is it that you're able to go around your wife and love your boys but not love your wife all the time? You love your boys all the time? Yes. My, my four-year-old can get me uh, upset at times uh, when he has his tantrums, but yes, I love him. So how are you able to love one and not the other? How are you able to love your kids, but not the mother of your kids? How are you able to do that? I guess it's the, the caring part that uh, it seemed like the care is always there or for, for my boys. But not for your wife? Not all the time. When you say the care, you, you don't care about her at times? Well... When she makes me angry, uh, I think the care goes out the window. What should she do when you are mad at her? How should she handle that? Um, I don't know how she should handle it. I mean, I'm just used to her handling it 
or react in the way that she normally reacts. Okay. Let me just say this to you. You don't, because of time here, you don't, if you don't love your wife, you don't love your boys either. Because you can't love one and hate the other. You can't care about one and not care about the other. It doesn't work that way. Either you have love or you don't have love. So you're deceiving yourself and believing that you have love for your boys but not for your wife. And that's why when the oldest boy act out, you don't feel love for him either. You get angry at him, right? Irritated or whatever you want to yes. say. So you don't, you don't love your boys either because your love is based on how somebody is acting. If Michelle doesn't be mad, if she's not angry at you, then you love her. That's not love. Or if your boy is not acting out, you love him. That's not love. You don't have love for anybody. You're deceiving yourself and believe, or being deceived by Satan in believing that you love your boys, but you don't love your wife. That's ridiculous. Don't let him deceive you like that. All right. Either you have love or you don't have love. Because when you go out into the world, you're going to run into all kinds of people that's going to bring hell upon you. And if you don't have love, you're not going to survive that either. You're going to be mad all day. You're going to be, you know, overreacting. You're going to be feeling whatever you feel. God wants you to have love. He doesn't want you to have love for one and not the other. Especially, he doesn't, he wants us to love our enemies. But especially with your family, you can't, you, it's your responsibility to love your wife. Remember the scripture does it say, love your wife? Cleave to your wife, and you're not, you're the Christ head of your family, of Michelle. You are supposed to guide her spiritually, take care of her financially, take care of your family. And you can't do that because you're judging her and her weakness. You think God treats you that way? No. Well, you represent him on earth. Why not treat your wife the way he's treating you? And if you say you got over your mother's mother, your resentment for your mother, you should not be resenting your wife anyway. It should be gone. Okay. okay. And you see how your wife is really feel alone because she knows that her husband hates her. Hates her. Your wife shouldn't be feeling that way. You should correct her when she's wrong, but you can't do it if you have hate, if you resent her. You point out what the issue is, but don't resent her, and that's what love is. All right. You're failing your family. And then when your kids grow up and go crazy, you're going to blame Michelle for it. You're going to say, oh, she did it while I was at work. <laughs> you're not going to say, oh, my poor wife, I didn't even help her. I judged her, I was mad at her, I didn't like her, I liked her sometimes, and sometimes I didn't. And no wonder my kids are messed up. You're going to blame her for it. Isn't that true? Yes. And you're proud of yourself, right? Not proud. That's nothing to be proud of. Yeah, so what are you going to do about it? I'm going to work on getting over my anger. One thing that you guys need to start doing is sitting down and talking about this stuff. Just be honest about what you're feeling, what's going on, so that you can get over this stuff so you can guide her. She shouldn't have to go to her mother for answers. Her, mother's, her mother is not going to give her the answers because she doesn't have them. She needs to go to you, and you go to Christ. Your wife needs to find comfort in you, not hatred, not, not resentment. Okay. You need to get, it's not her fault that you uh, have this anger. And yes, she may be bringing it out, but she didn't put it there. It was already there when she met you. And it's not her fault that you don't know how to deal with issues in life. You need to get over that immediately because you have children. Because if you don't love your wife, you don't have any love to even pass down to your children. And the kids, boys and girls, need the love of the father. And they need it at all times. And that doesn't mean you don't correct them, but you've got to be patient and honest and guide them, but you don't have it. So they're not getting the love of the Father. And you're going to see that when they get older if you're not already seeing it. Okay. That makes sense? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So will you start working this out with your wife? Yeah, I'll try. You'll try? Yeah, I mean, yes, I will. And, <laughs> and Michelle, you participate and let me know how it goes. Now, you got to get over your, you know, forgive your mother for uh, hating you through 
hated her father, through, your father, through you, so that you could, uh, so you'll get over your passiveness as well. All right? Yes. And if, if you got need, need counseling, let me know. We can work on this. But you have children, and you got to start doing this in the right way. Because after a while, your kids are going to be out of control. As they get older, when they hit the teen, when they become 13, and maybe before that, you're not going to be able to handle your kids at all. And you guys know better. You know that there is a better way. So it's time to start dealing with that better way. Okay. Why know the truth if you're not going to even try to live by that truth? And the worst mistake you can make, both of you or anybody, is to blame as adults. Blame each other for the way you feel. You need to overcome those things. I appreciate your honesty, though. But you guys need to shake off Satan and start living. And Michelle, you need to wake up and just start living. Open your mouth and start talking. You may be wrong in what you say right now, but it's better to say it than not say it. Because you just, if you don't speak up for yourself, then Satan's going to use that against you, and you're going to judge yourself for not speaking up. Oh, I hate myself. I'm so weak. And then you're going to start doubting, as you were saying earlier, if you're right or wrong about what you're saying. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, you'll be all over the place. God wants you to calm down. He wants you to be able to see so you can live your life, so he can guide you. But you got to repent. You must be born again in order for that to happen. And you cannot be born again unless you come out of denial about self. You got to see that you're wrong, and that's all it takes. And he would do the rest. All right? Did this help a little bit? Yes. It did? Okay. How about you, John? Yes, it was helpful. Yes, thank you so much for being with me. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. You can get involved right now by calling 800 800- 411-2663, 800-411-BOND, 800-411-4673.